attention given to him and his word. If you have your uh, bulletins, let's quickly go through the announcements. Uh, first of all, we certainly want to welcome all here today. Uh, if you're visiting with us, we especially uh, can welcome you and invite you to make Kingdom Christian uh, your church home and worship and serve Jesus here uh, with us. Uh, first on the list, congratulations to Jadlyn Revel on her baptism in Christ on Sunday, uh, May 19th. So I'm going to ask her, Jadlyn, if she would come up here. And she has a beautiful name. And Jadlyn, I'm going to tell everybody your full name. Okay, this is a beautiful, she has a beautiful name. It's just four names. It's Jadlyn Delilah Grace Revel. So, congratulations. <laughs> If you haven't had a chance to congratulate her, or maybe you didn't even know uh, that she was been baptized, please uh, make sure you encourage her and congratulate her on that. Uh, Sunday school classes, I just want to encourage all to come uh, each Lord's Day at 9.30 uh, for those small group meetings and time of teaching and fellowship. Uh, there will not be any uh, regular uh, evening service tonight or youth meetings. Uh, we have VBS set up instead, uh, meeting here at 2 o'clock. Uh, to get ready for the uh, week of vacation Bible school. Uh, we've been advertising this for some time. It's here. Uh, it begins tomorrow night, uh, June 3rd, from 7, 6, 15 to 8, 30, And uh, we still have uh, places for service, uh, places where you can be a part of this ministry and this uh, work uh, of uh, bringing children to know Jesus. So please see Carolyn, and uh, she will get you involved in uh, some uh, form or fashion in the BBS. Uh, our BBS closing program will be during the uh, morning worship hour uh, next Sunday, so we'll have that program for you after our uh, week together. Uh, we will have a catered meal after the morning service at, at dinner uh, in the uh, fellowship hall, and uh, of course that's uh, open and encouraging uh, for each and every one. Uh, Wednesday Bible study, we'll not have that of course this week, uh, but we'll pick up uh, the next week, uh, finishing up who is the Holy Spirit, and then begin a new ministry the week after that. Summer Lunch Wagon Ministry, that also begins tomorrow. Uh, the uh, sign up for that is back there. If you haven't signed up for it, uh, I really encourage you to do so. Uh, pick at least one day maybe during the uh, entire summer. Uh, we do this in June, July, and part of all things, two weeks in August. Uh, uh, take just one week in August. So pick a, a day or a couple of days or whatever, and uh, be a part of that ministry to children as well. Um, need to be here at 12.15. Uh, if you are signed up and going to be a part of that, uh, you need to uh, be here a little bit early to get ready uh, for that. And our serving time is from 12.30 to 1, correct? Right? Okay, so uh, just keep praying about that. We need prayers for, uh, for all that during the week, uh, during the year. And uh, just pray that God will really touch the lives of kids through this and their families and bring them to Jesus. Uh, church camp registration uh, is uh, going on for 2019. Uh, Young people, the church pays for all of you, each and every one of you to go to camp. Uh, you go to Indiana or Oil Belt. Uh, Shirley and I took the uh, styrofoam plates and things that were collected uh, for Camp LEM. We took those up yesterday. Excuse me. I met the, uh, the, the camp director. I had never met him before. His name is Brent Miller, uh, and uh, he's a very nice, uh, uh, very nice gentleman, and we had a good conversation. Uh, he's interested in coming and speaking to the church. Uh, about Ileana. We've never ever had uh, a camp director from Ileana come, uh, so I was uh, pretty interested in that and excited about that. But anyway, uh, gave me some registration forms uh, because we didn't have any for Ileana. They're back there now. So kids, pick a week of the of Ileana and uh, the church will pay for that. Um, Sunday, July 14th, Charlie Duke, who is the new director of the Children's Home, uh, will be coming to present the work going on there and preaching during the morning service. Uh, Red Hook Preaching Rally uh, is going on uh, this upcoming week as well, uh, to, uh, June 9th through the 7th, uh, through the 12th. Uh, Bob Russell, Jeff Walling are doing the preaching gospel ads, uh, doing the music, and uh, hope to go up there at least one day. <coughs> so, orders for the 200th anniversary shirts back there. Uh, if you would like to have one, make sure that you get signed up for that uh, and uh, have that uh, order. Uh, volunteers for Will by Camp leaving. Uh, for uh, camp on July 30th. That's a Tuesday. Uh, talk to Jerry Hawking. He'll get you involved in that. Uh, the styrofoam plate collection for Alien is over. Uh, there are other things that are being collected still for all of Children's Home. Since Charlie's coming next week, or next month, we'll just continue that until he gets here and he can take it with him. And uh, that will save us a trip up there. Uh, mission team uh, ideas, if you got any, uh, please have those filled out and give those to a uh, mission committee member. 200th anniversary, uh, August 25th. Uh, 
uh, be sure and be here and invite and encourage everybody you possibly can think of to come and be part of that. A lot of good things uh, planned for that date. Uh, the graduates, I'll let you read through those. Uh, we'll probably take those out after this week. Uh, but we'll be praying for them and uh, we'll congratulate them. Any other announcements? Okay, no other announcements. Uh, on to the uh, prayer list then. Uh, from the men's class, the Sunday school class, uh, Robert wants us to add his friend, Scott Lee. Uh, he was uh, in an accident this week uh, because of the tornadoes and the storms. The tornado flipped the fire to that. I flipped the semi over. Landed on top of him. Okay. So he has some back uh, injuries to be praying for Scott Lee uh, from, uh, from that uh, accident. Uh, be praying for the lunch wagon ministry, uh, the vacation Bible school, uh, the family of Jerry Dasher. Uh, there was another shooting this week in Virginia Beach. Uh, so be praying for those uh, families. Uh, also be praying for uh, the farming community uh, with uh, the farmers struggling to get in the uh, fields to plant the crops. And those who have been affected by all the tornadoes and storms. Uh, from the ladies class, uh, Suzanne Brooks with breast cancer. Uh, this is Josie and Jesse uh, Rice's grandma, um, John and I'm Jean Roberts. Uh, we're in a bad car accident, still in the hospital uh, at Deaconess in Evansville. These are friends of Renee Ross, uh, Bo Bailey, uh, Garrett Franks, and Wyatt Womack. Uh, three boys hurt in a car accident. Anyone else to add? Okay, keep your bulletins as your prayer list for the week. And uh, be praying daily for each and every one. Uh, on to the birthday list, we want to wish happy birthday to uh, Ken Martin, uh, June 3rd. Uh, Lathan Blair, June 6th. Uh, happy anniversary then also to Harry and Wilson, June 3rd. Uh, Ryan and Andrew Venus on June 8th. Any birthdays or anniversaries, not to bother holding Okay, one more prayer uh, request. I almost forgot this. Uh, Jennifer Martin is having uh, eye surgery in Evansville this week, so be praying for that surgery as well. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Good morning. Um, I'm excited. BBS is tomorrow night. Am I ready? No. <laughs> I'm excited. I encourage anybody to come and help it's just one night because you will be so blessed, especially if you come here to get saved for the songs for the school. And I would just like to ask that the teachers for the week, uh, Robert's teaching, uh, Tony's teaching, Lori's teaching, Travis. Mark's teaching, and Travis. Travis's teaching. And each night, if you would just pray for the Holy Spirit to bless that teacher, you know, and help, you know, God's words come out of their mouth. Um, that is a tremendous thing because I know in the preschool class I just take a quiet moment when I get here early and I do every year and I sit down in my little chair that I keep in the little kid chair I sit in when I teach and I just go to the Lord in prayer and ask Him to provide the words. You know, I know the story but and good or bad, whatever He does I can feel the, you know, the Lord working and He does provide and I hope we have a good time in preschool this week. We only have four free registered, so we need to bring those three or four year olds out so I can have 20, oh, uh, six now, so I can beat my 27 that I had last year. So. All right, on that thought, free on the vacation model school thought, let's stand this morning and sing our opening praise. And we have to come to this house and we stand for <coughs> Thank you. 
to lift up your name, to exalt you in the songs that we sing, in the prayers that we pray, in our study and attention to your word. Uh, fill us with the Holy Spirit and uh, help us to have spiritual eyes and minds and hearts open to the word uh, that you would speak to us through scripture or through a song or anything else that anyone might sh share today. Uh, be glorified in everything that's done. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Uh, be with those in our prayer list. We pray for healing touch on every person's life. Uh, those uh, families that have lost loved ones, uh, people facing surgery this upcoming week or have had surgeries, uh, maybe pe people struggling with cancer or other issues. We pray, God, for your healing touch on their lives. Uh, be with families, especially that have lost loved ones recently. Come with them, God. I pray for Christians to reach out to them in love and compassion. Father, bless BBS. Fill this place with uh, children. This is your house, not ours. And I know that you love to have children in your house, so fill this place up full and overflowing with children from preschool and every age. And Father, just bless every person in their part in BBS and uh, help us be ready and use us like that the Lord said. Uh, just fill us with the Holy Spirit and use each and every one of us to touch the lives of these kids for Jesus. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. For our prayer this morning, we'll be saying, okay, on to be
Okay, for our communion in this morning, we'll be singing the old rugged cross. We'll sing the same two verses, standing on the second verse as the elders and deacons. <clears throat> Sins, come and carry these burdens to the cross, the foot of the cross, and just 
know that this new covenant gives us that opportunity through Jesus to have eternal life. Give us these words and opportunities through the days and weeks ahead uh, to share that great news with those who are lost in this world. We pray that you'll give this church opportunities to go out in this community to reach those who are lost, to share your love through this church and touch people's lives and make them better. Just be with this service that all we do may be glorifying to you and your son. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
The likelihood of ever don't doing so is slim to none. What age? When I was going to Johnson for Bible college, back in that day, it was the age of 12. The statistics go on. Based on a nationwide representative sampling of more than 4,200 young adults, the survey data shows that people from ages 5 to 13 children have a 32% probability of accepting Christ as their Savior. You realize the statistics are going to go down, right, after that. From the ages of 14 through 18, 4%. Young people between the ages of 14 and 18% are only 4% likely of accepting Christ. Isn't that scary? It actually goes up after that point. From age 19 through adulthood, it goes up from 4% to 6%. But do you see that after the age of 14, the probability of, of a person accepting Christ, that's why it's so hard to, for us to witness and get people to come to Jesus. Because they're already set. Who and what they are is already basically determined. And yet, it is so important to the ministry of the church, the ongoing vitality of Christ's kingdom. Here are some great old, great saints of old who accepted Jesus when they were young. Somebody reached out to them. Somebody engaged them to know Jesus. The, the great Christian martyr, Polycarp, accepted Jesus when he was nine years old. Matthew Henry, who's written many commentaries. I've got a whole set of them in my office. Accepted Jesus when he was 11. Jonathan Edwards, who wrote the sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, who caused a great spiritual revival in England some years ago, accepted Jesus when he was 7. Isaac Watts, writer of many of the hymns, was 9. Henry Drummond, great preacher of old, 9. Stanley Jones, the great missionary Methodist missionary and statesman, was 8 when he accepted Jesus. Corey Ten Boom, you've heard of her, right? Accepted Jesus at the age of five. W.A. Griswold, a famous Southern Baptist pastor, accepted Jesus at the age of ten, but he felt called to be a preacher at the age of six. The hymn writer Philip Bliss was twelve when he came to know Jesus. William Booth, the founder of the Salvation Army, was only fifteen. Harry Ironside, great preacher of Chicago era, a number of years ago, was thirteen. See how important it is to minister to children? So, so important. Eliza Agnew was the first single female missionary of her day and age, and she went to the nation of Ceylon. There she became the head of the central boarding school for girls, and was so for 40 years. She was known as the mother of a thousand daughters because during her time there, over a thousand young ladies went through her school. And during that time, she actively engaged them to know Jesus. And out of the, the thousand or so that came through her school, over 600 came to know Christ as Lord and Savior. And she referred to her ministry to young people as the ministry of finding pearls for Jesus. She was eight when she accepted Jesus. Dr. Lois Labar has written a book entitled Children in the Bible School. In just the first chapter, she lists eight reasons for emphasizing children's ministry in the church. I'm going to read to you at this time, and I'm going to share three others later on. I, I want to share with you the, the sixth one. 
It's important to win children to Jesus because children have their whole lives ahead of them to serve him. Because she goes on to say, suppose that the Apostle Paul had been converted at the age of 70 rather than at an early age of about 25. Think of how much less he would have done for Jesus and how church history would have been different. Matthew Henry, the writer of several Christian commentaries, was converted at the age of 11. But what if he had not found Christ until 70? Or Isaac Wants, who was converted at 9, what if he had become a Christian at the age of, say, 60? Jonathan Edwards, who was converted at 8, what if he had been converted at the age of 80? Richard Baxter was converted at the age of six, but what if he had been converted at the age of 60-something? The work that those men and women had done for Jesus from the time that they were children would not have been accomplished. And the church would be far poorer because of that. Let's get into our text, Mark 10th chapter, verses 13 through 16. First point, and I really want to just be quick this morning. Jesus loves and wants to bless all children. That's my first point. And I know you know that, but we need to be reminded of that aspect, and we need to mimic and copy the life the likelihood of Jesus and his relationship and his desire for young people. Mark chapter 10, verse 16. Look at the first phrase in that verse. And he took the children. Jesus was there and people were bringing children to him. And in the last verse of this event that <coughs> involves him and young people, it says that he took the children. He embraced the children. He invited all the children. Every single child that was brought to him, listen to me please, was worthy of his time and attention and his love and blessing. Did you hear what I just said? Every child was worthy of his time, his attention, his, his, his love and his blessing. Every child he took the time because he loves children. He created them. He breathed life into them, and he wants to continue to bless them. He wants all of them to know him as their personal Lord and Savior. Every child is therefore worth my time, my attention, my love, and the blessing that I can bestow on them. Not just my own children and grandchildren, but all of your children and grandchildren. And equally true then is that all of my children and grandchildren and each and every other person's children and grandchildren are equally worthy of your time and attention, not just your own. And the children outside the walls of this building. Oh my goodness, there are children all over this community that are hurting, that are going hungry, who are being abused in so many different ways. And they are worthy of our time and our attention. They're worthy of anything and everything that we would spend or expend to bring them to Jesus. And so this week, there are two ministries that are available to you to, to jump on board and be involved. VPS is starting in the Lunch Wagon Mission. Get involved. That's worth your time. You are not going to do anything more important this week than those two things, let me tell you. It goes on in verse 16. And he took the children in his arms. Which means he did what? Simple, isn't it? He hugged them. How many children in America today do not get hugged? You know that years ago when the Soviet Union and all that was still going on, and in some of those countries that were allied with them, they did some experiments on, on orphan children. And they would isolate children 
from all the other children. They would feed them, they would clothe them, they would take care of all their physical needs, but they would deliberately withhold any and all personal attention or touching to them. And every one of those children grew up to be emotionally unstable. And they eventually killed them. Children are worthy of our time and attention. Jesus loves every single child on the planet. Every child in my family, your family, and everybody's family in this community, in this country, and around the world. He took the children in his arms and he put his hands on them. There is power in physical touch. There's power. Power in physical And he blessed them. And you have to think about that for a moment. What, what, what does that really, what does that actually mean? He blessed them. Here's my take on that. I believe he spoke words of blessing to them. Most likely, what that means is that Jesus, while holding those children in his arms, spoke into their ears looked them in the eyes and spoke to the Father, spoke to our Heavenly Father, spoke to God about each and every individual child and, and asked God the Father through prayer to bless these children. And so we need to pray for children. We need to pray that they are loved. That they are encouraged, that they are fed, that they are clothed, that they are sheltered. But most of all, we need to pray for children to come to Jesus. Because that's the heart and soul of this, this particular text. I'm just emphasizing right now, Jesus' prospect on this, his aspect, his, his opinion, his involvement in this particular story. Jesus loves the children and he wants to bless each and every child. And I want you to note, secondly, that Jesus got angry with the apostles and possibly other disciples who were there that were trying to stop the children being brought to them, to him. Mark chapter 10, verse 13, it says, but the disciples rebuked them. People were bringing Jesus, but the disciples rebuked them. I don't really know what that means. The word rebuke means to tell somebody you're doing something wrong. So I assume that they were speaking to the parents to say, stop doing this, this is wrong. Quit bothering Jesus, or whatever they said, they were keeping the children and their families, bringing them to Jesus. And I want you to know what it says in verse 14. When Jesus saw this, when he realized what was going on, he was indignant. That simply means that Jesus was mad. He was angry. With Peter, James, John, and all the other apostles, all the other disciples that we love so dearly and we know were good men and women of God. But in this moment, they were wrong. And Jesus was angry with them. And I want you to understand that when people do anything in any shape or form to keep children from coming to Jesus, that makes God mad. And we'll get to that here in a little more. And I want you to know thirdly here is that Jesus commands His disciples to bring the children to Him. Verse 14, He said to them, them who? The disciples. The ones that were trying to keep the children from Him. He says to the disciples, the followers of Jesus, let the little children come to Me and do not hinder them. And so to the church, to the disciples of Jesus, to the people of God, he says, bring the children, don't do anything to keep them from coming. So here we've got this opportunity this week to, to minister to children, to help bring them to Jesus through Vacation Bible School and the Lunch Wagon Food Mission. The question is, will we take advantage of that? I'm going to be involved in all, in both of those things, and I know there's going to be a lot of people, but I'm, there are there are. And most likely there are some people here that still haven't volunteered to be a part of either. Please get involved. Help us out. Because missionally, we as a Christian community, we need to reach out. We've been, we've been, we've been studying this for some time. We want to become a more missional church. We want to engage the community. We want to be active and proactive in bringing people to Jesus here in Kingsburg and the other communities around us. We support the Oblong Christian Children's Home. We got the director coming this next week. We know we had Tyler Mulvaney, who was here uh, like back in October or something, as the director of, of 
oil belt camp, and I met Brent yesterday, and they're doing great things for Jesus. We need to be a part of that too. We need to be inventive. We need to be creative. If there's some ministry to children we need to be doing, somebody speak up and let's get it started. Secondly, bring every child to Jesus. Jesus loves all the children. He wants to bless them. So we have to bring the children to Jesus. Mark chapter 10, verse 13. People were bringing little children to Jesus. Understand something. That children have to be brought to Jesus. I know that you, you know, that's just, it's, it's just such a, you know, it's just right there. You think we, children have no power. And I know we live in a culture that tells children they've got all the power, in it, but they don't. There are children and families all around us whose moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas, whoever, whoever their guardians, whoever's taking care of them, are not going to church anywhere. They don't care about Jesus. And those children have no power. They can't get to Jesus. Somebody has to bring the children to the Lord. Most children aren't naturally going to do that, even if they were able to do that. Because there's foolishness, Scripture says, bound up in the heart of the child, and they have to be taught and brought to Jesus. And the way that children are brought, quote-unquote, to Jesus is through the Bible. It's through the teachings of Scripture. They need to be brought to Christ by being brought to Sunday school. Because in Sunday school, the Sunday school teachers teach them about Jesus, teach them the Word of God, and worship services. Because hopefully I'm preaching the Word of God, and I hear that. That church camp, PBS, family devotions, family prayer time. A number of ways that children can be brought to Jesus. Not only do we have to bring children to Jesus, but we need to never do anything to stop or prevent any child from being brought or coming to Jesus. Mark 10, 14, let the children come to me and do not hinder them. That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean, this is a double negative here, that doesn't mean not to do anything concerning bringing children to Jesus. But rather what it means is not doing anything to keep them from coming or being brought to Jesus. I know you've got to wrap your head around that. Because understand this. That you can hinder a child, which means basically to stop or prevent a child from being brought or coming to Jesus simply by... <coughs> Not helping. Not doing something. Not doing anything. To actively bring them to Jesus. You know what I'm saying? I'm not... What Jesus means here is He doesn't mean that the only way to keep children from coming to Him is to go out and block the church door and don't let children in the building. But if you're not doing anything to bring the children to Jesus, you're just doing nothing, you're still hindering. You're not helping, so you're hindering. Because we need all hands on board. We need everybody involved. So personally, as Jesus commands us, do whatever you can to bring every possible child to Jesus. Missionally, as a corporate gathering, as a Christian community, Together, we need to bring every child we can to Jesus in any way possible to do all that we can to bring them to the Lord. Final thought. <coughs> in this text, Jesus says heaven belongs to the children. Did you, did, did you notice that? Mark chapter 10, verse 14. For the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God is just simply another way of speaking of heaven, referring to heaven. Heaven and the kingdom of God are the same thing. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. These who? These children. So, heaven belongs to all the children. What children? Every child. Understand that what Jesus is meaning here is that every child needs to be brought to him while they're young, before they get too old and are impacted negatively by the world and our culture or the culture of some other country to where they might never come to Jesus. 
That's happened to millions, oh no, billions of people, right? Here in our own country and all over the world, people have reached the point where, as the data says, that they have grown to a point where they are, percentage speaking statistically, they're probably never going to come to Jesus. Because nobody brought them to Jesus when they were little. When they are, had open hearts, had open minds, and were ready to embrace the Savior or be embraced by the Savior. <coughs> A person might ask why it's so important to bring, not hinder, to let children come to Jesus. That's a, I think that's a valid question. Why? Simply put, it's because Jesus wants them all in heaven. Am I wrong on that? Isn't that right? Jesus wants all of his babies in heaven. He wants them all to be saved. He all wants them all to know Him, accept Him as their Lord and Savior if they reach the age when they can understand the difference between right and wrong. And He wants them to be with Him forever in heaven. That's what He means when He says the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these, these, these kids. And so as I finish this thing up, know in your mind and heart that Jesus makes it clear that He wants you To help do anything and everything possible to bring every single child to heaven. To be with Him. To know Him. To love Him. To follow Him. And the same thing is true for us as a Christian community, as a church, as a body of believers. We kind of keep on doing, creating, reaching out, embracing, doing, working, struggling, whatever it takes in order to bring one more child to know Jesus. It's like the old story about the young man walking along the, the shore of the ocean and where a bunch of starfish had been washed out. You've probably heard this illustration before. And they're sitting out in the sun. You know, they're going to die if they sit out in the sun and don't get back in the water. They're going to just die on the, on the beach. And so he's walking around. He picks one up. He throws it back in the ocean. An old, older gentleman comes along and says, Why are you doing that? You can't save them all. <coughs> True. You know his response, right? You, you, you've heard this before. No. But he reaches down, he picks one up, and he says, But I saved that one. That old song? Jesus loves the little children. All the pavement. All the children of the world. Let me close with this. This is a little <coughs> article that's actually entitled Plan B. When I first read it, the title and I thought, it's like I do with kids. According to the organization called Save the Children, in the last decade, more than 1.5 million children have been killed during military conflicts. Millions more have been injured. One out of every 200 children, meaning approximately 10 million children around the world, have been psychologically <coughs> affected and damaged by the war. Much of the damage has resulted from approximately 100 million, 100 million landmines that have been planted in countries around the world. <coughs> I had to look at that several times to see if I read that wrong. 100 million. These mines are often placed in areas frequented by children on purpose. Places like schools and playgrounds. And with the natural curiosity, children are most likely to be in these areas and explore and run around. 
More than 26,000 people are killed or maimed by landmines every year around the world. 90% of these are civilians, most of them children. The writer makes a, a spiritual application of that, and she simply says that Satan has so permeated our society and our world with spiritual landmines. All of them deliberately set and placed to maim and mangle the souls and the personalities of our children. And concludes with this statement, that's why the ministry of the church is more important than ever in saving the children. I'm going to be here all week. Would you come and join me? A lot of people are going to be here all week. There are people that are playing snacks, food. I always look forward to the food. Well, I do. Games, the lessons. We've got five wonderful people that are gonna that are gonna present some great powerful lessons about about God and about Jesus. It's gonna be some music going on. Carolyn, you got any jobs left for anybody? There's always jobs. Always jobs. Will you hang around if somebody wants to come and volunteer? Sure. Okay. There you go. Sabrina, got any dates left on the calendar? Yeah, there's just one person. Okay. At least two or three. Okay. There you go. If you leave here without jumping on board to help save the children, I hope you will find some other way to do so. Because to do nothing is to him. And Jesus said, don't hinder. <coughs> Let's stand on this.
as we see the fruit in the lives of the children. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.